Hi, I'm Al Cadulo, and welcome to Explore Health. There's an insidious killer on the loose. He lurks waiting around the corner, biding his time until he strikes, seemingly without warning. His methods are methodical and deadly and hard to predict. For some, his strike is sudden and swift. Others, he leaves dangling on death's door, a slow, twisting, agonizing spiral down until there's nothing left of you. Heart disease has taken over 48,000 victims in 2004 in Australia alone. Almost 12,000 of that number were women, making it the single largest killer of women. Heart disease accounted for a staggering 34% of all the deaths that year, and the numbers are growing at an alarming rate. For a growing number of older victims, traditional medicine does not have much, if anything, to offer by way of treatment. Most are told in no uncertain terms how little future they have. Uh, basically, the diagnosis was um, congestive heart failure, and I was subject to sudden death. Well, anything's better than sitting in a wheelchair and withering to death. They just told me, take $1,000 worth of pills a month and go home and die. And I wasn't ready to do that. Stay tuned. When we return, we'll meet one pioneer who insisted that there is a future for these victims, who insisted that there was a way to give back the life cut short. And we'll also meet the group of professionals that he works with that won't give up if you become a victim of this deadly disease. Bangkok, Thailand is known for many things. The land of smiles, Venice of the East, Buddhas, temples, monks, elephants, sun, fun, a tourist mecca. But few would think of Thailand as the epicenter for a medical revolution. But that's just what's happening right now. A dedicated group of professionals is working to fight this horrific killer, heart disease. I met up at Bangkok Heart Hospital with a modern pioneer in adult stem cell treatments. Don Margolis. Just how did Bangkok, of all unlikely places, end up as one of the only places in the world that offers this life-saving treatment? At the beginning of 2004, no American had even applied for a clinical trial to take this another step and relieve five plus million heart patients of the misery of heart disease, and America wasn't interested. And I couldn't understand why. And uh, I then went to a Wall Street friend of mine and said, look, I think we can produce this kind of product and treat heart patients who have no options or are going to die and have no options left. And he said, well, you'll need seven to 10 years to get to market and 50 to $100 million. And I said, well, I'm 69 years old, and I don't have seven to 10 productive years, probably, and I certainly can't raise $100 million. So I raised $3 million here in Asia and started the company. Once started, the clinical trials went amazingly smooth in the first phase. When Don was getting ready to start phase two, he was stunned to learn that the Thais didn't want to go to phase two. We went to them and said, look, we'd like to start planning phase two, a double blind trial. And the Thais, <clears throat> Thais are not like the Americans. They said, that would be unethical. Um, there are too many people who have no options that need something. And you can provide it to them. And we'd like you to start treating people who are in stage and or have no options. In other words, people who are going to die in the next three months or even in the next three years. But there's nothing their cardiologists can do except give them pills. The head of the Bangkok Heart Hospital is Dr. Kit Arum, a brilliant thoracic surgeon with over 30 years of experience. He interned and got his residency in the US and is the co-founder of the prestigious Minneapolis Heart Institute. Now the director and chief thoracic surgeon at the Bangkok Heart Hospital, he leads the team of professionals that are paving the way in this new medical frontier. He's very clear in his beliefs and parameters for this treatment. I, I mentioned that before, I want to be clear in two points. One, we don't use embryonic stem cell. Two, 
we don't use the animals themselves because it's people start using the sheep themselves, goats themselves. We don't do that. Okay, we use adults themselves and the cell coming from the blood. So we don't target, we don't treat, we don't use them cell as a first line treatment. We target only the people who don't have anything else except where to be transplanted or die. So those are two issues that I like to be very clear for the public to understand. I asked Dr. Kit to explain just what are adult stem cells. Well, adult stem cells, well, uh, when the child was born, okay, the stem cell available in the cord blood. From that point on, we call adult stem cell. And then the older we are, the stem cell is decreased. The stem cells, as just like I said before, the stem cell can be found in muscles, can be found a lot in bone, bone marrow, and lately, a few years ago, we found that there are stem cells in the blood as well. There is a lot of confusion in the general public about embryonic stem cells and adult stem cells. Dr. Kitt elaborates. I, I don't think they were very clear to the public that there are two types of stem cells. One is embryonic stem cell, the other one is adult stem cell. So people talk about stem cell, they're afraid that stem cells are the cells that were taken out from a aborted child. So those, those are unethical and illegal too. So if you separate it completely between embryonic and adult stem cell, there are several procedures for implanting adult stem cells. Dr. Kidd explains why Bangkok Heart Hospital uses one more than the others. Mainly what we do here is we go through the chest. The reason we choose that way because uh, we map the area that has a scar or fibrosis or infarct first. We know exactly where that area is how big it is, use the cardiac MRI. We do that every case. When we done that, we go to the operating room. We open the sac around the heart. We inject the cell right into the area that we mark it. So the cell go directly into that area and the surrounding area.